and welcome to another episode of More Than Dice. I'm Gonzo. I'm John. Kathy. Welcome to episode 207. So tonight we are going to be talking about what it costs to get into your miniature game. Um, and we're going to discuss why they're that expensive and what's going to, you know, how best it's going to hit your pocketbook type thing. But before we do it, we need to thank all of our sponsors. We're going to thank Muse on Minis for hosting our file. Uh, also, don't forget, you could use more than dice, all one word, and get, uh, <laughs> you can get 10% off your order. Uh, and don't forget, you can go to Mini Masterworks and you can get 10% off your order from them by using more than dice MMW10. And uh, you can get that from them. They make some really good products um, type thing. But we have some important, important, important business to discuss right now. Like, super important. Kathy, what are you drinking? Uh, I am drinking the last of my Cherry Coke Zero and rum. Got it. John, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm having another uh, gin mule. You know, I've never really drank gin that I can remember. I've never had it as a mule. I'll have to make sure I get one of those next time you and I can get together and drink. I am fortunate that the first time I had gin, it was Bombay Sapphire gin. Uh, it was really good because I've had some shitty gin since then. <laughs> it, the, the first time I had gin, Creek Hens, my roommate at the time, said, hey, somebody left this over, finish this off, and I drank it straight. Whew. Um. That was not my best moment, but I, I, I am here. That which does not kill you only makes you more drunk. Uh, I'm, doing I, standard, <laughs> I'm doing the standard. I'm doing the standard McCollins um, scotch going on. Um, whatever. This is a, some special batch. I don't know what it is, but it's good uh, type thing. Guys, please, please, please make sure that you're taking care of yourself out there. Uh, you're looking after each other. You're doing what you can to make people safe. Um, wearing your mask still, got your shots, everybody's good. Things are kind of slowing, calming down some, but don't get stupid. Make sure you protect yourself. Um, we have any uh, shout outs today, John? I mean, I, I think the only shout we can give is the Ukrainian people. Russian warship? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Mm. Oh, that's good. That's Captain, good. as you keep track of that, we'll get them all in time next week. I just felt like that was the appropriate toast for uh, this week. It's been a fucking week. Yeah, it has been a week. Wait, um, wait, Mizzy, did Loretta Swit die? Major Mizzy says Major Houlihan. Yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't even see that one. I'm so sad. No, the movie one? Cookie, it was the movie one, not the TV one? Okay. Oh, yeah, Sarah, Sally Kellerman. Okay. Yeah. There was somebody else, too, and, and but I, I can't remember it because I didn't write it down. Yeah, well, we'll keep track of them, and we will get them... Uh, uh, we'll get them next week. Yeah, the movie version. So... So this topic was brought up by uh, a friend of mine because they were like, hey, I want to get into miniature gaming, but I want to figure out, you know, what it's going to cost me. And I'm like, OK, well, what kind of game are you looking for? And he's like, well, I'm kind of like, I kind of want a sci fi game. And I'm like, OK. And we started talking about it and stuff. And the person was like, holy crap, really? And I'm like, yeah, really? And uh, came down to it. I says, and he's like, "Well, that's kind of a cool topic y'all can cover on the podcast." I'm like, "Yeah, it would be a cool topic because we have tons and tons of games." So, before we get started on the actual cost of stuff, there are some costs that you have to do before you even buy the game. You know that, and we're not going to cover those like tape measures. You know, uh, you know, asterisks on that. Not all games use tape measures. Correct, measuring stuff. You know, for the most part. Um, now you got like Legion and Marvel that they you get that in there, but um, like dice, uh, certain ones have special dice stuff like that. We're talking about 
I want to go purchase this. And we're not talking about paints, too, because and primers. Because, well, some people don't paint their shit no matter what. But that's a whole different story. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Yep, true. There is nothing wrong with it. But if I wanted to go to the store and I wanted to play game X, what do I need to play a standard size game? And for some people, you know, like 40K is, what, 2,000 points now? Uh, War Machine Horde is like 75, you know, stuff like that. So, Do, do you want me to start with 40K? I'm um, ready to start with that, 40K. Yeah. <laughs> but before that, we want to make sure that we're talking about these are not prices from like discount stores or eBay or anything like that. This is buying direct, straight off the website type thing without trying to get a discount. You can get these a little bit cheaper. And of course, eBay and, you know, getting stuff like that. Yeah, you can get the stuff cheaper. But we're talking about just getting straight on there. Um, <laughs> I love it when John smiles with his eyes. Yeah, because this is going to be a big thing because I actually we talked about this yesterday. So, yeah, this because uh, 40k because I did an Age of Sigmar and 40k also. So before we do that, I'm going to go and switch over and let, let me start though. Trust okay, me. yeah, yeah, because I've got to get the camera ready because I have to Extreme do some painting. Close up, Gonzo. Ah! And I spent like five hours yesterday redoing all that paint, by the way, and getting it all set back up. Oh, your rack? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, I won't show it. Yeah, yeah I reset up. Um, by the way, I took all the scale 75s and put it up there, and it pretty much is now half my paint collection now. Because um, I put all the colors. Because, and it... Um, cause I got all the metals, all the inks and all the fluorescence up here because I found out that I'm using fluorescence a lot more than I thought I would. Thanks to Kathy. Awesome. So hey. but one thing I did like is they came with these little cool little books in the thing books. and it like teaches you how to do use them and Scale like, 25 is fucking good stuff. I thought this was really cool. I haven't had a chance to read it, but I mean, it's like, hey, here's how you do, you know, non-metallic metal. Here's how you use the metallics. Here's how the intensify, the ink to ink test intensify, blah, 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 blah. how to use them and all this other stuff. I haven't read them, but it looks really cool. Oh. And I'll read them later. I can still speak more coherently in Gonzo, not Gonzo, and I've been drinking. Yeah, I can't <laughs> speak today. Uh, but I thought this was really neat. Because um, I did do, I, I have used them just a little bit. But it was for a side project that I'm working on. I bought a bunch of metallics and I have very much enjoyed them. They are seem much better quality than GW even. And GW makes pretty fucking good metallics. Well, after I finish my uh, Warcaster stuff, I'll start using it. Because I've got um, some models I want to paint just to paint. Because i got to finish up um, this guy by Creature Caster. The... Uh, I'll be honest. I love black metal. The paint. I a, looked at that. I thought it was like it's a, it's a great base, but it also lets you do some weird stuff with it because it's got a tint to it. But uh, it's a good base because it's a really dark metal. I like the I like the crap out of it. I, I often will put heavy metal over it. Um, but I like to use that as a as a base for a lot of things. So I've got to finish up my Warcaster stuff because Adepticon is what twenty four days away. I don't know anymore. Type thing. Not enough so. time for me to finish the things I wanted to finish. So. Uh, in case it was wondering, I am 200% not going to be there. I know that's not possible, but I'm 200% it is. Work has just gone to uh, hell. In a handbasket. Bark, bark, bark. Uh, it's bark, Theo. Bark, bark, Him bark, and Tyson bark. are playing. Bark, bark, bark. <laughs> oh, I need some. No, nope, they're going at it. They're definitely going at it. Did he just mute it? I think he just muted it. To, to <laughs> yeah. So let's start off with the topic. Gonzo had uh, had me start off with uh, 40K and Age of Sigmar. I can do them both at the same time. It's really easy. Then I'll let Gonzo get what he found on his own um, for the cost of entry for those two. And the cost of entry is, how the fuck should I know, Gonzo? I don't fucking play these games. <laughs> I haven't played 40K in a fucking edition or Sage Sigmar in an edition. Like, literally. 
And the real answer is, if you have to ask how expensive 40K or Age of Sigmar is, you fucking can't afford them. <laughs> you really can't. That's true. It's true. It's and, like, it's like and, buying a coach purse versus one at Target. Yeah, and you're a little too high, Gonzo. Down. Oh, hold on. Let me... Or camera up. Yeah. Uh, and, and the non-jokey, that's sort of the jokey. I'm glad Captain C. Lol, well, that's, that's the effect. Um, those games, there is no set cost because the, the price in models is just totally out there, and especially when you look at them in the U.S. I have to apologize for my rant last week. I was looking at prices in Australian because my browser, for some reason, just defaulted <laughs> to Australia dollar on their website. But the stupid thing is none of us challenged the prices. We just said, man, GW expensive, because that's the real truth. GW expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you that if you want to get the core of what you want to, to get for 40K, it's going to cost you $180 for the core rule book, the codex, the data cards, and the chapter approved book you're going to have to fucking get because it probably has updates to the points values of your particular codex. Correct. That and, was something I couldn't remember what it was called because, I mean, I don't play 40K or anything anymore. And I couldn't remember what it was called, but I was like, oh, I know there's some more books besides the codex, the starting book, and everything else. And, and let me just say this right. Go to your local game store to buy that. Don't go on the website because the website's fucking trash. If you know everything in and out and you know what you're looking for, perfectly fine. But if you're on the outside going, I want to get started, nope. Fuck the website. Go to your store. Well, I went I went to the store to purchase things, and I actually had problems with their website. Um, it wouldn't let me click on stuff and get things purchased, so I thought it was interesting. I was like, yeah, I clicked that, and I did it. Why isn't it, took, it in my basket? Their stuff's not set up. It took me forever to find the 40K core rulebook. The 40K core rulebook was difficult to find. What kind of bullshit is that? I did eventually find it. But uh, Age of Sigmar is a little cheaper inherently at 155 because uh, they used to have their thing like data cards sort of called uh, War Scrolls. But I yeah. didn't see if they have those anymore. They do. So they probably, well, they're not on the website anywhere you can usually find. So it is likely more. So you're looking at, uh, I mean, adding a tape measure and a cheap pack of dice, you're looking at $200 just out the door. Assume you know what army you're going to play, and then army on top of that. Yeah. So I and priced. There's armies. no way to tell. I mean, I just, why did you do that, Gonzo? It didn't work that time. Well, because I already had two armies built. Um, one of Age of Sigmar army, because um, I played Sylvaneth and I knew exactly what it was. Yeah, but and it's then, not the army anymore because there's been a whole price change, uh, cost change since then. No, no, no. I, I I reconfigured it. I used the army builder and reconfigured it. And then I went and took a 40K army that a friend of mine plays that he uses competitively and built it and, and he gave me the build and then I went and purchased it. Not actually purchased it, but just put it in the cart. So a Necron army, which I've actually played and I had before, um, just the models was just a little over 1500 and so it's funny, Bowie said that. He said he felt like the cost to play 40K was a dollar amount equal to the points you were playing. Huh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's remarkably close, because with the book or rulebook and everything, you're looking at $1,700 for a 2,000-point army. So, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty close. Good good on you, Bowie. Good one. You ain't even played count. 40K much, and he knew. Doesn't even count paint and time for painting. Correct. This was just straight up buying the models. And but, something I did notice mm -hmm. that, you know, my friend was like, you know, I I need, I have four models in this army. They only sell them in packs of three. Yep. Um, so you have to buy two. And that's not even counting the fact that you might not have the weapon options you want out of that. You might actually have to mm -hmm. go to a uh, third party or 3D printing to get some of the weapon options you want. Correct. He said there was that, that issue too. But he says one of the things that was interesting was whenever he wants to build this, he's like, I need four of this, this model, but they only sell them in packs of three. Yep. And I'm like, okay. So cause when I went and looked and I, he gave me the list and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, yeah, it is because there's only three in this unit. And I was like, well, okay. So hey, now keep you in mind, 
console is giving you competitive army. If you're playing that and price is an object for you, you would probably just go to a three-man unit and then add something to another one that you probably might already have left over with what you're already spending. Correct. So. But, I mean, that yes. just goes to the point that, you know... Yeah, it's fucking expensive. It is the the Ferrari of fucking games. And I'm here to tell you, not that we're necessarily judging rules, it ain't worth it. Like, you'll always be able to get a game which is worth it, and if you like it, it's all good. And honestly, it's not that bad if you're building a unit, painting it, building a unit, painting it. It'll be fucking enjoyable because the models go together pretty well nowadays. They're really cool, but yikes. When you hear some of the other prices, even for just for the ones I've done, you will uh, see what we're talking about. Well, because I also did uh, Age of Sigmar because I did Silver Death Army. And the one thing that I wanted to note about that, it was roughly the same amount. But I'm, I'm gonna add this. I want to add this caveat with Age of Sigmar and the Sylvaneth army. The one thing you have to buy is forests, because the army deploys uh, forests. Well, yeah, that's why it's the worst one to use as an example. But or maybe the best one because fucking here's more shit you gotta buy. Yeah. And actually, honestly, a lot of the armies do that. They have whatever their cool terrain piece is. Mm-hmm. It's available for the army for free, not points. You just deploy that shit. Yeah. So, so I mean, and that's not even counting the fact that Gonzler probably isn't easy using any endless spells or any shit like that that would concur an additional cost. Yeah, I didn't put any endless spells on my list. I just know that it was. I remembered, and I'm like, oh, I had to buy a minimum of three trees, three and you have to buy forests, and you have to buy the exact ones they have because they are a GW model that has to be used per their rules. Yeah. So you, you can't said, make a fake if, fake one. If you you're if you're print playing, one. if you're no, stop. If you're playing just with your buddies, you buy one, you make a cutout on cardboard or something or MDF of the shape of the forest. Correct. And you use that and whatever trees you can find for your add-on. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, that's the reason why there's always this caveat that if you're going to go to like Adepticon and play this list, you have yeah, to no. have the trees. If you're no. just hanging out with your buddies. If your buddy gives you shit for not buying three forests, he's not your buddy. If, it's, if they give you shit for that, they're not your buddy. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll be honest, if someone came up to play me at the local game store and had made forests, be like, is that the right size? Fuck it, looks good to me. Yeah. I don't care. Ain't, yep. ain't hurting my feelings, none. That's how it should be. Yeah. So GW is the most expensive. It will always be the most no one's even said the price of anything else, and I'm going to tell you that GW is the most expensive. Yeah. Like, 40K, Age Sigmar are going to be expensive, mm-hmm. but also, they're the highest model count from the big dog. Yeah, so. you actually need those models, which is different from, you know, like, Marvel Crisis Protocol, as, as Legionnaires mentioned, you just don't need as many models. Nope. Even if they are expensive. I got it. So, Kathy... Let's 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 get into. So we went with the biggest game. Let's go with the smallest model count wise. The I mean, smallest model count wise. Yeah. Uh, Guild Ball. Oh wait. Guild Ball. Wow. Kathy, the body blows there. Damn. What did they do to you, Kathy? Show me on the doll where they touched you. Nice. They touched me in my butchers. Damn it. Damn it, indeed. Those were some cool models. Uh, well, we could go into a whole podcast on why that happened, but let's not this yeah, podcast. Yeah, let's not. Let's not. <clears throat> you know, games come and games go, and that's just how it is. It is. Uh, so, Warcry, I think, might be the, uh, it's the on smallest the, model it's count smaller, of the yeah. GW ones. Fair. Warcry or Necromunda or something like that. Yeah, oh, Necromunda too. Uh, I haven't actually played Necromunda. Uh, I don't so play 40 Carriage Sigmar, but he gave it to me. <laughs> I do know that Warcry, I I think I fielded it at the most six guys when I played my Iron uh, Golems. Yeah, that's definitely lo- in the lowest area. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. You and, can do some uh, stuff with six models because you can make those models look. I think that remote. might be the least expensive of the. So I looked at. Blood Bowl. When I say I, I mean Jim. But then I did too after that. Uh, 
Because I ran out of time. I'm just going to be honest. That's fine. So Blood Bowl. We shouldn't have to have homework looking Kill at you, team. Gonzo. <laughs> Poor cry. Look, I agreed to that. It was all on me. And... No, I'm still blaming Gonzo. Okay. I get blamed for everything. I'm used to it. So I mean, Blood Bowl, it's... which is near and dear to my heart, because even though I haven't played it in years, it's the game that got me into playing miniatures games at all. And uh, so that one, you get the you get the box set, which apparently is it one is one forty for season two. And then I guess the box set probably comes with maybe it doesn't come with rules. I don't know these games. Like some of the box sets come with rules, some of the box sets don't come with rules, and the rules are sold separately. So now I don't even know. And All some right, of them Blood are just Bowl. straight online now. Blood Bowl second yeah. season. Let us take a quick look. But but Blood uh, Bowl is not. They have the official rules is fifty dollars. Yeah, it comes with uh, only comes, comes with two teams: twelve uh, Imperial Nobility team and twelve uh, Black Orc team. Yeah, that sounds about right. And yeah, hard one. hardback rule hardback rule book hardback important to note. Comes yeah. with it? Yeah, hardback oh, comes with it. Nice. So you get all those models plus that rule book, which is normally fifty dollars, uh, and the board and templates and dice. I mean, you're always gonna want more dice, duh, but you don't I, need them. It's one of the few games I think it's okay with the number of dice it has. Yeah, yeah. Cause it looks like but, it comes with with six block dice. That's crazy balls. Well, that's, you that's, need you need three block dice for each side. You could share block dice. We did that. Oh, are you kidding? You get somebody else's dice karma on your dice? Back when I was learning to play Blood Bowl, we didn't <laughs> even have a, We had barely had teams that were Oz. We just played a bunch of teams against each other every week in time with the NFL season. All right, I'm going to get off my uh, old man horse now. Though I actually probably shouldn't with the way my back's Something, feeling. something, something, Nuffle. Nuffle. Crazy Nuffle. Crazy Nuffle. Yeah, so 140, like, literally, not bad. But, but, that's only a starting team. Well, two starting teams, technically. And then you can get your star players. You need to fill out because it's probably going to be mostly linemen. And you want, and, and they probably don't have enough. Uh, I think it's still 2-2-2. Two, two two. Like take a blitzers, look you will probably want more black orcs. Uh, four linemen, four bodyguards, two blitzers, two throwers. Not sure if that's... I don't know this team that well. It's some version of the I'm human team. I'm just guessing. Uh, the Black Orc team is six goblin bruiser linemen and six Black Orcs. Oh, shit. Okay. You get Griff Overwald, an ogre, very ghoul chewer, and a troll. In the box? Yeah, plus wraps. Okay, okay, okay. So $140 for all of that is really good. Yeah, that's perfectly now, fine. Now, if you want that, and then you also want a corn blood bowl team, because who would not? I mean, who would not? I mean, I want a real team. The corn's not a real team. I don't know. I haven't played in in since living uh, rule book days. I, I I'm a classic blood bowl guy. I played a bunch of teams. Humans and orcs are the best because they play like football. You can really do some good stuff with them. I love orcs. Orcs you, uh, are very fun for me, humans. Uh, but orcs, I think, and, were the oh, yeah, best yeah. team I like, had play-wise. Uh, even though I love my Nurgle team, but they they suck as far as comp- you know well, being competitive. I should bring this up for you, Kathy, just because you'll care, and it's quasi on topic, and it came up in a Facebook post this week. One of my guys reminisced uh, since I was talking about that MCP thing of the random Blood Bowl League I, I ran, where you would pay X money for a player, and you would roll on the table. And for that money, you might get a goblin, you might get a fucking Chaos Warrior. Oh, nice. E- every player was on there. Every If you wanted a star player, like, I want a star player I'm playing. It was the average cost of all the star players. Uh-huh. And you're like, roll on the chart. You may get yourself Morgan Thork. You might get uh, oh, Nabla God. Blackboard. That would be awesome. And I love it. was like, that was the most fun campaign ever. Did uh, do you to... get a pitch with the uh, starter set? Oh yeah, yeah. okay. Every, I was, yeah. was kind of curious. What about the yeah. cards? Because I know the cards. Cards don't exist anymore. Oh, do they not? Yeah, they got rid of cards a long time ago. 
No, they they had they have cards in the in the new. Uh... Do they? Because they're yeah. not pictured, and they got rid of cards like. These are like cards for like well, special things two, that you can the, do. When they first released uh, the new Blood Bowl, uh, it, it had cards like special play cards or yeah. whatever, and we were surprised because. Yeah, I don't. The set listed as not listed on the. Uh, okay. So maybe uh, that's the thing that they did away with. Yeah, because like honestly, like the like back when they made the rules compendium uh, or third edition sort of Blood Bowl, they got rid of the cards. Yeah, I remember we were ecstatic. But uh, look. I both loved it and hated it. I so here's the thing, and this well, God, this is different topic. I'm gonna leave it alone. Go ahead. I'm just looking at the website and it says Blood Bowl Shambling Undead Team Card Pack. Don't know what that is, but I don't uh, I don't team card pack. I don't know what the team card pack is. Well, so there you go. You'll if you're you'd probably need a team card pack, and it's worse because you'll need the one for the teams in the box set because you here, don't have oh, that. Here it is. In case you in case you can't figure out how to make a roster, there's a full set of reference cards for oh. each uh, player position and star players. Track your team with blank cards because uh, you're too uh, stupid to be able to print out a roster and Yeah, out. fuck off with cards. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, I will say one thing though, Kathy. The Nurgle team dice are beautiful. Agreed. Oh my I god! Would like, I would like. I would like Nurgle team dice. But yeah, so it looks like the team, and, and keep in mind, every team is twelve players. It looks like which is twelve-ish players, which is not enough because sixteen's a roster, and you could have more. I could, I could break up my Blood Bowl uh, figure case and tell you exactly how many players you could use because I have every player you could use for the old human team, every one. I have every player you could use for my Nurgle team I mean, right like the, behind the, me. The first right edition, the, the first edition star players like the werewolf, the Japanese guy, Oshikomi. I got all those guys. Nice. But, so there you go. Blood Bowl, quite affordable, obviously. One forty, then another forty plus for your team. So under two hundred. Yeah. Or probably, let's say, if you're playing humans or orcs, easily under, probably about. 200 if you're playing another team probably 250 ish yeah yeah hey Banyan. oh Banyan, I, would, I would absolutely get one or two extra teams i would Banyan. maybe want undead or i would want dark oh, yeah. dark elves but, but uh, coming with two is good that means you can teach someone how to play off the bat yeah because it's a two two player starter set yes okay well not necessarily but i mean it, it's not for two players not enough templates for two players or pitches but you can teach someone. You will have an extra team to teach someone with, which is important with a game like this. Yeah. And there's also, also well, just easy to say, there's a lot of extra accoutrement for GW games if you want to spend more money. You could. Custom pitches, dice, all that sort of thing. And they're all pretty premium price point, just so you know. Uh, so you want to keep going, Kathy? You want to go Warcry or something? Uh, yeah. Warcry, the new box set, Red Harvest, uh, $210. Oh. I know, that's what I said last ah, time, but ah. I, I actually thought it was like 230 So I mean, it's a little bit less than I thought, but still, it's still, it's I still swear. It's still not a bad deal, it's just such a price point. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. Um, the the first Warcry box set I swear was like a hundred fifteen dollars. Yeah, it was great. And uh, and it comes with terrain and dice and tokens and yeah. models. So, and this one also comes with a new different set of terrain and dice yeah. and tokens and cards and and all that stuff. It's got the rule and book. It's the got, models uh, are really cool. Uh, twenty three models and a twenty eight piece plastic set of terrain. The game folding game board, tokens, dice cards, and all the extensive accessories to play. I, I feel mean, like I feel like twenty three models is more than what what came in the first set. Yeah, I think the first one was only maybe ten. I mean, at ten, like twelve to fifteen ish. Yeah. Felt like. I mean, it's it's a good amount of stuff. It's just that price point's a bit high. Yeah. But all that terrain is so pretty. Let me tell oh, you. Oh yeah. It, it, really pretty terrain. If Warcry looks like the interest, you guys, it's it's a good 
limited model count stuff. And the game is fun. It's a lot of fun game, and it takes you can you can put it up on the kitchen table, and there's room for it because the board is that small. But they did that on purpose, and I appreciate that for about yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, I could put it on my living room floor and still have some place to sit on the floor mm-hmm. so that I could play it. Uh, and it takes all the games I played. Now, I didn't play a ton of games. This was before, you know, before uh, seclusion. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't played a ton of games in a COVID age, what you telling me? Yeah. So I did get probably like six or eight games in. None of them was over an hour. And that's something else I like about it. Because, uh, let's face it, I get distracted. And if a game drags on, I it will be even longer. Because I'll be wanting to stop and have conversations with the person I'm playing with. Or with other people that are around us. We'll stop and eat food. You know, and then it becomes a marathon all fuck? day thing. And and so I like at a War Cry game, you know, we can play an entire game and then have lunch and then play another game. And then we can do like best two out of three. Deep. So yeah. But but yeah, two hundred ten is a little on the high side for it, my it's, budget. It's sticker shock. It's definitely sticker shock. But it's good. I mean if you can afford it, it's it's, it's a fun game. Yep. And lovely terrain. John, were you able to get uh, a Malifo costume? I was able to get everything. You are so awesome. Go, go with the Malifo because Malifo is like going a little bit above what that would be because then it goes into the skirmish size of. Uh, so you're telling me you believe Malifo is going a little over the cost of uh, uh, Warcry? No, no, no. I'm saying model count wise. Okay. Uh, it's not, but. Is it? I thought you, how many, so how many models, so give us an example. I mean, 10 models is a lot. Six or eight, I think, is what I ever played with. Um, I've never played, so I I don't know. I could see getting 10-ish, 12-ish at the absolute max. It's, I mean, it's, it's never too much, but uh, I'm here to tell you that, uh, so it's also another weird one, uh, because... It's built to. It's built for you to buy everything. There's not like you make a list and that's the list you play. Correct. You come to the table then with a faction. You then say, "I'm playing this master." After you figure out certain things, and then you make your list. But that's not to say you can't just come to the game with a uh, uh, list. Uh, my old uh, what do they call them? Henchmen used to get upset that I'd come to the table with the list and then roll people anyways because. I don't fucking care. But, so, it's also weird because um, you don't necessarily need all the stuff. There's a lot of stuff you don't need, but I'm going to give you everything. First off, their app is free. Fuck you, Games Workshop. Free app. Yeah, that, that actually is quite a big bonus. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, their first app was five bucks. Just five bucks, period. Awesome. But their second app, they're like, nah, fuck it, free. I'm like, Awesome. So, uh, their core rule book's twenty bucks. It's it's soft back, but fuck twenty bucks, dude. Um, all told, uh, and this for a core rule book, a deck of cards, and you can use a standard deck, but I don't suggest it. You probably want a deck because it makes things easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, your cooler. faction book, which is a hundred percent unnecessary, but I put it in there anyways because you might want that because it's got cool background and fluff, and part of the fun of Malifaux is the background and fluff. Um. The, if you get your A core gang box, the gang keyword upgrade box, so like guards, you get the guard upgrade box, and then the box of the versatile models for your faction, which are the ones that can go with any master, uh, all told runs you $203. That's still not bad. That's <laughs> under the cost of a Warcry box. <laughs> now, granted, you're going to expand, but you could play that perfectly fine. But you need to make your own terrain. <laughs> oh, you would need to get terrain, yes. But again, he said cost of terrain is not included. Uh, cause I'll tell you, when it first started, I took books and stacked books up for terrain mm-hmm. and did all that. And oh, no. styrofoam. I, I would steal all the styrofoam from everyone. And yeah. Oh, yeah, styrofoam. Uh, you know, like 
styrofoam fortress of Navarone. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of ways for drinks. <laughs> so let's go to a, 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 a bigger one. So I did a war machine in hordes. Easy for me to do. I play it. I know it. I know exactly what it is. War machine hordes, rule books, hundred percent free now. The I mean, app oh, hold on, hold on. Because they don't fucking exist. Well, they said they're going to start doing books again. Buy anymore. But yeah, it, too late. That yeah. ship has sailed. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, is you don't have to buy the books. The rules are online for free. Is the the main but kicker. I will counter that the rules are just enough that you really want a fucking reference. Like it is one of those ones where I feel like you would want a reference with a couple bookmarks while you're learning to play. Like seriously. Like the old digest ones that came in the starter sets were great because you just put a couple. Yeah. Like my, my ex-wife used to put little uh, tabs at the top of all the books or the side of the books. So you could see what mm-hmm. section was. It was great. Yeah. And, and if you buy a starter set, you can still get those little books. Yes. But are they accurate? Uh, no, because they were, they were no. inaccurate immediately. They are inaccurate now because they did do a whole price point. But you do have the app. I mean. The app is free, but you free have to pay. Asterisks. Yeah. But you have to pay to get the full list. It's more like free so you can learn the game. And then you want to build full, full armies. Then you got to pay, uh, I think last it was like $35, $40. But it's a lifetime membership and you get free upgrades all the time. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to pay any additional fees. Asterix, until they make the next app, which they're unlikely to do. Correct. But I feel like I should say that. Yeah. Um. So I priced out my Hordes army that I have, that I play, and it comes to roughly about $1,000. This is a competitive army. This is, you know, what I play, what I did, so on and so forth. Um, you don't have to buy extra dice or, you know, anything else. It, you know, you've got these dice at home, so that's, you know, not a big deal. Um, but... You are buying, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is because it would actually would be about $500, but War Machine and Hordes, their tournament scene requires you, for the most part, to bring two lists. So, I priced out buying two lists. Now, granted, you could also make that a bunch cheaper by playing basically the same fucking list, just changing the caster. Yeah. So, I'm going to add this caveat. To play War Machine and Hordes at its base count, if you just wanted to play one army, one Warcaster, roughly about $500. But I will D- counter that. They don't have rules for that, so you're stuck with the tournament scene. Well, the tournament scene says you can. Second lists are optional. Every tournament says second list is optional. But as a tournament player, if you're going to play in a tournament thing, you want the second list no matter what. Um, uh, Bowie brings up a good question. What's the question? Did you include the price of tokens and all? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. So so here's the thing that's... about tokens. Now tokens, everybody makes writable tokens. So you can get a set of writable tokens pretty cheap. To be fair, their old sets of tokens were perfectly fine. Correct. We all took it to the nth degree. What we all, we all, all we're machine horse, but we took it to the nth degree. Correct. The writable <laughs> tokens are perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. And those are like 20 bucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah like, I mean, maybe because they're out of print technically. Yeah. 20 bucks. But we are sucker for pretty tokens and handwritten ones I mean, that are already written. Who's not? Yeah. So those can go up to 30 to 50, depending on where you go. Yeah. So, but I, I would honestly suggest, unless you really like the look of them, just get the fucking handwritten ones. Yeah. So, my caveat is War Machine and Hordes. If you're going to play in like a tournament scene or something of that nature, it's probably going to cost you about $1,000 if you're going to be competitive. If you're just buying an army just to play and you want to do a one list and you don't care if you have a second list, it's about 500 Oh, and... Ben, and Bowie brings up a good point. The old, old GF9 tokens are actually the absolute best because they came with little spell effect tokens that were just icons, and then you had a sheet you could write what the spell is. Correct. And I bring that up because it's usable for multiple games. I've used them in 40K games to denote what ability is on what because 
40k is not about tokens, and I don't know why, because they could make a fucking killing. A killing. Holy shit, they would make money. Oh, yeah. But, so, the caveat of the War Machine and Hordes is, base bare bones, about 500. Mm-hmm. To go to a tournament scene, uh, probably about 1,000. Mm-hmm. Give or take. Roughly in there. Uh, John, what do you got next? I mean, I got Legion and Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, I go with Legion because I was curious about this because I priced it out myself and I was kind of worried about it, but I was going off of what I had and then what I played. So I don't know if points have changed and so on and so forth. Uh, so there has been a points change since I last updated my list, but it wouldn't change the cost horrifically. Okay. If I mean, because honestly, their stuff is still the most cost effectively priced stuff. Um, a list that I would actually play. Uh, and I'm including the core box, core box, and then all the models that don't come in the core box. It actually does use most of the models in the core box, just not Luke. You could make it cheaper by using Luke instead of another commander, but that's only like 20 bucks. Uh, and then an extra dice pack, because you're going to want an extra dice pack, trust me. Uh, ends up being uh, about $350. Mine was roughly about that. I was going around about about $100 more, but I was also going off the fact the f- that I was what playing... Doing? I was playing with ATSTs. I don't imagine that makes it that much more expensive, but sure. I think there were like because 50s. They're, they're high cost. Yeah. Yeah, but they're high cost. I mean, like like my most expensive are the Wookiee Warriors and the Rebel Pathfinders at about thirty five bucks each. And I mean, ATSTs more points and a little more pricey, so I don't feel like. Yeah, that's the reason why I was kind of curious because I was going off of old stuff of what I was going off of. So that was my thing. As I was like, hmm. Mine was about a little bit more than yours, but I think that yours, I mean, I, I agree with yours is probably more accurate than mine because, like I said, I had to go off of old. Well, no, mine's an actual list I would have played. Correct. Like, I, it's a list I made up. It's uh, Jyn Erso, uh, two units of fleet troopers, two units of rebel troopers, commandos, pathfinders, and Wookiees, and an ATRT. So, I mean, uh, I think it seems like a solid, fun list. I didn't do any of the crazy ones. Uh, I did try and make use of the box set stuff. I mean, I just looked for lists that used some of the box set stuff when it went. Uh, even if you uh, didn't use all the box set stuff, it really wouldn't go up that much. I mean, if you take out the ATRT, because you're going to use the Rebel Troopers more often than not, um, you're only going up maybe another 35 40 bucks. You're still coming in under 400 Yeah. That, and uh, I feel and, like and that's what I with, thought it was more. Uh, with game mats and more terrain, I feel like you could probably get that whole thing for six. Terrain might be a little sparse. I mean, if you go a little crazier, depending on what you own at home, like maybe a little more, you go. You're still under two lists for War Machine and Hordes with game mats and terrain. You'll come in easy under a thousand, probably in the seven fifty range with two game mats and terrain, because they don't easily make three by six game mats. So you get two three by threes, and let me tell you, that's fine. Three by threes are very useful, and the boxes all come with the tokens. I mean, honestly, I think in a per model to dollar ratio, I think Legion still takes the cake. Well, I went and um, priced out Warcaster. Because somebody had asked for it and was wondering, you know, how much is this going to cost me? And so I printed off and I put my list out. Now, you do have a starter set with Warcaster, which is good because it gives you all the tokens, the little handy dandy miniature rule book uh, that you're used to getting. And so you get everything. Uh, even the special dice, you get enough special dice because Warcaster uses the Monpok dice. Uh, that people are, you know, are used to seeing the explosions I mean, on it. I don't think anyone ever seen. I've ever seen Monpok being played in person. But anyways, proceed. Uh, yeah. Um. So, I built up my list. The one thing about Warcaster that will make it an easier on your pocketbook is the Warjacks. The one thing about Warjacks and Warcaster is you customize them, and you can, you know, you when you buy a Warjack, you outfit them the way you want. So, like, a head is a different thing, the weapon, so on and so forth. So, you've got a variety on there. Now, you could be like me and a glutton for punishment and just buy more warjacks. But if you magnetize them, even easier. 
because then mm-hmm. you can customize your war jack and you can put it out wherever you want. The other thing about Warcaster that makes it even better is there is a maximum allowed that you're allowed to put into a list. Um, so you can't buy like 20 of the same thing. There is a unit restrictions type thing. Um, and you don't even have to buy four of everything if you don't want to, even though that's the maximum. You're usually only going to buy two of maximum of anything in an army. One, if it's a hero, because of course you can't buy more than one. And two, because the way the game is played, you uh, aren't going to be able to love, field all that. I love all the disclaimers here. Get to the fucking monkey, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm explaining <laughs> it because this is a newer game and people have been asking these questions. I, I mean, the people who want to play it are going to look it up and it'll be okay. And a lot of people... No, I'm just curious to see how much it is. Maximum? $400. Okay, that's... And that's, Fine. That, that's buying out the... Because you don't need to buy tokens and stuff because it comes with it. And buying maximum of everything that you want to field in the game. So. I mean, seems fine for a skirmish level game. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're playing with 15 units maximum on the board. So $400 is actually very, com- very compromised. I mean, it is a, a, a comparable in the way that people are buying armies. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. I, I didn't even remember because I did do the Kickstarter and got it, you know, cheaper. Not much, but did to get it cheaper. They do have a, another set coming out pretty soon. Um, and that is another, it's a Cadres, and I'm not sure of the full rules on it, but it's more models and everything. And that's like $120 if you want all of those models. But that's just still coming out. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good price for a game. No, yeah, I, I, I was I was curious on that too. I mean, I, I feel like it's a little more premium points per model than Legion, but you're not getting just a list. You're getting guns. I put your ears back on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're getting uh, you're getting the whole basic faction more or less for that. Uh-huh. That's, that's that's pretty good at all. Yeah. Yeah. Type thing, which I thought was interesting because I was like, oh, that's cool. So where do you want to go next? I assume you want to hit the uh, the Marvel since it's the big dog. Um, actually, I want to grab something else. I actually okay. went and priced uh, A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, Why? Not played a lot, but it is a great game, especially if you like Regiment, you know, Rank and Flank, and I think it's a really, really good game. I would have rather you priced Conquest. Um, I don't know much. Of, I don't know enough about Conquest to price it out. That oh. was my problem. Oh, really? So you don't know about a game system, so you didn't price it out. I didn't know enough about it. <laughs> Kathy gets what I'm just picking it up. I know down. what you're saying. I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> uh, um, you shit. So, uh, I, I thought about it and I was like, I, I don't know enough to build a list and stuff like that. So, But I did know Song of Ice and Fire and they did recently go through a rules and change and a lot of different things. So, uh, I repriced it out, redid my lists, rebuilt them, and the a Nightwatch army buying the starter set and anything else comes to two hundred and seventy five dollars. That's pretty good. Which is actually pretty reasonable considering yeah. that it comes with the terrain on it. Yes, it is a flat cardboard terrain, but yeah, I but, know why they do it. I understand, yeah. but. I would totally add a 3D thing under on top of it and then take it off when someone needed to stand on it just Correct. because. Yeah, We all get that. But, I mean, that's that's a start off right there. It oh, hey, hey, this what it is. Yeah. Um, and someone has made 3D versions of it that you can print off yourself, which I've done. Cool. Um, awesome. So that one comes in. That's kind of one of the lower end ones. Comes about 275 And that's me, you know, doing my whole Nightwatch Army, redoing it and getting it, you know, tournament ready. You only but that's, bring uh, that's a cool mini or not, right? Correct. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> but it is a really good game. So, And I, I was really surprised because I thought it was going to be much more look, than that. Look, I'm going to say this, and it's a really terrible analogy, but you'll get what I'm saying. Hitler could make the best fucking miniature game in the universe. I'm still not fucking playing it. Yeah. So, All right. So let's go with Marvel Crisis because that's the new hotness. 
Marvel Crisis. Uh, I'm going to go technically. Do you, do you just want to get in and play? Cool. Costs 100 bucks. Correct. That's it. The core box is 100% playable out of the box. Now, I also did extra. Do you want to play it and have some options for the two factions in there? Uh, so you'll want a second dice pack, trust me, because it's going to get a little nutty sometimes. Yep. Yeah, Legion said the two range, the entire range is like twenty seven fifty if you want to get the entire range of every model. But uh, so the core box, the dice pack, and three packs. Each of the packs has a Avenger and a Cabal member. It's a uh, Black Panther, Killmonger, Doctor Voodoo, and Hood, and Mystique and Beast. Is only uh, basically two hundred thirty five dollars, and that is. More than you need, you can definitely make a either an Avenger or a Cabal list, and you'll just use some of the members of the other team or Spidey and or Doc Cockhorn affiliated with either as your fillers, because then it's uh, seven members of each team and then a bunch of other dudes. And I one upped it. If you want that with a game mat and then enough terrain to pretty much fill that game mat, it'll be a little sparse, but not horribly so. It'd be three hundred and sixty-five dollars for a game mat, the New York City terrain. And a commercial truck, and that is literally throw it on the mat. You can play. Yeah, I was really surprised going back. Was it Legion that said how much all those models were? Yeah, twenty seven fifty. Yeah, I was. Uh, I went back and I was like, because a lot of people are buying everything, and I, I get, I get that, no problem. And how about I, one up Bowie is painting everything. How many you got left, Bowie? <laughs> <laughs> It'll take a while to respond. Keep going. But I was like, I was really surprised how much it was because I was like, oh, oh, yeah, well, I mean, and then I started, and this was a little oh. while back, I was like, I can't it's buy one of everything. paint. Is everything fully painted? I'm like, I can't buy everything. No, but I mean, why would you buy? You don't need to buy everything. No, that's, and that's, that's what I was like. That's a fucking fallacy. I'm, I'm going to play just, you know, XYZ. I'm going to play just X-Men or, you know, whatever type thing. What the heck is that? Oh. To be honest, a lot of the, the, the fun event they do is called the Three Box Challenge, where you get the core set in three boxes to make your list out of. And that's why I went with three boxes, three boxes that work with the core set as my basics. I mean, honestly, most factions you're looking at, now some of them are a bit deep, but really, like if you look at Asgard, Asgard has four fat four boxes. You buy four boxes, you're done. Guardians, I think, has four boxes. Oh, Cookie Man is the posture check. Cookie, I can't. Because my back's killing me. If I straighten up, it's going to fucking end me. I'll so, check my sorry. posture. Yep. I'll just close my the sign is still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck, it's there. I don't like it, though. We're not agreeing today. Yeah, Morton Joe says Marvel Crisis Prickle Train is on Etsy. Lots of prints and everything. Uh, and Bowie says... Basically, twenty four hundred for buying all the characters in Marvel Crisis Protocol. The other is their terrain pieces. Yeah, the um, terrain, d depending on how big and how elaborate you want to go with Marvel Crisis, the terrain can get out of hand pretty quickly. Um, actually, I don't think it does. Like literally, no. I'm I talking about like... how much you can put on the board, like how tall oh. the buildings are. I um, mean, yeah. Cost wise, I can print off a set of terrain, no problem, on an FDM printer, pretty cheap. The I just I saw how cheap. cheap it was for everything for what I consider a perfectly playable force. I just decided to add a couple bits to make it, including the mat and everything, really good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think under four hundred for third on a mat, enough terrain to play with, and a whole force. Your buddies got to bring their force, and hell, you almost have enough models for two forces at that point. Like, really good. Yeah, I thought the, it was a really the, good price. A two-player starter set goes a long way. Oh, yeah. The, the, well, it's not even a two-player starter set. It's a one-person starter set. Correct. But if you... It, you it, can teach people off of it because it's got an exact... In fact, most of the rules are technically online. The quick play and all that stuff's in there. You just want it for... It's a good way to get some terrain, the rulers, the, and maneuvering tools, the dice, and a bunch of characters. You don't need to buy the core set. It is just the best way to go. So missions and tactics cards, yep. So, but you get some of those out of packs. But once they make a card of those, so I mean, it's definitely, uh, I, I still maintain probably one of the best buys as far as miniature, as miniature games go. Though, I really feel like Legion is in a fight with it. 
and, and the thing, but here's here's the difference. In MCP, you're playing with a maximum of how many models? Ten. And in Legion, you're playing with how many models slash units? Depends on how stupid you want to get. <laughs> so I mean, there, there's there's I, I a big difference in that. that. I've gone full stupid on, but the thing is, full stupid just means I have six Rebel Troopers or Fleet Trooper units, and they're thirty bucks a pop, and that's not even bad. No, no. I mean, I'm talking about model count wise. The Legion model count is, you know, of course, much bigger than. Oh yeah, Star Wars Legion is much bigger than Marvel, but that's yeah. that's it's meant to be that I, way. And more than brings up a good thing is like some armies it might add up pretty quick because droids you'll get a bunch of troops but they're cheaper and they're similar costs. So, but still, I feel you know they'll end up in in a ballpark of that area. And we also did not just going back about price and models per army. We have to add the caveat that certain armies are more expensive. Yep. A.K. Go buy a Tyranitor and Orc army. Um, that's going to be even. That's going to change the cost of what you're going to be buying. So that's a little bit different. Um, so our low cost full army battle buys. Um, what was it? Uh, where'd it go? Warcasters roughly about four hundred. Song of Ice and Hires about three to three fifty, give or take, but mostly around three twenty five. Legion, you said is what? Uh, about uh, three fifty. About three three fifty. So there's there there's quite a few that are around the three to 500 range that are not yep. like a, a board game style game as in blood bowl or what was the other one that Kathy had Warcry. 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 Although Warcry is, is not a board game, but it's just a low model count. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, yeah. And then the larger Count games. Legion is the larger count of those, which goes to what you said about there. And then it goes to Song of Ice and Fire, which is a larger model count. And then uh, War Machine and Hordes. And then, of course, Age of Sigmar and 40K is the largest type thing. Yeah, and they're stupid expensive. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give a chance to do that. Like, like I didn't want to... Like dig on, dunk on them, but oh, when you put it out like that, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, when you think about, let's say, you can play Marvel, Legion, and Malifaux, and a Song of Ice and Fire for less than forty k. Yeah, you can play probably three or four games. <laughs> no, no, four or five. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to actually do the math. Like, if you, oof, it's crazy. I mean, it's just like you dunked a warm machine of hordes, so why not 40K? Because people actually play 40K. Oh. People play 40K I mean, at the store. <laughs> I mean, I'm also going to, I also dunk on them because I feel like they've dug their own fucking grave. Like, honestly, they should have a. Uh, it's the same shit I talk about all the time. I don't need to keep going on about that. But let's just say they dug their own grave as far as that. Now they get to fucking live in it. Oh, I totally forgot to do the hobby streak. Thing. Jesus Christ. Yeah, see, Cookie, that, that was something else that we brought in, too. If 40K or Age of Sigmar brings out the two-player battle box and brings out two of the armies that you want to... It, you're going to get a bit of a, a, a bit of thing, but or if you can split it well, that's also correct. super good. Cause when I bought my Necrons, when I originally was playing Necrons, I bought it and I went to every person that had the Necron two player starter set and says, do you want your Necrons? No, I'll buy them from you for this amount of money. And so I got it cheaper. But like I said, we weren't going to compare that because there's way too many, there's way too many ways to get things cheaper. Although the aftermarket on 40K and Age of Sigmar is still pretty high compared to all the other places. So I did get my Gambit and Colossus and all them this week, and I haven't put them together yet. I'm, I got Warcaster to do. So other than that, you know, the one thing we didn't price out, and it's actually got a decent recursion, is X Wing. <laughs> I don't think 
at John's face. It's like, no. Why? Well, you can't. You can't. There's no rhyme or reason. The only rhyme or reason they added was just recently, and I'm not going to read a whole new set of rules about their scenario play to figure out which fighters to buy because I'd also have to look to see what the new prices are because they changed the whole fucking thing. Yeah, they got changed up completely. I was just yeah, making, so it, making a joke. We also didn't do Armada, but again, there's those are also smaller scale games where just you don't need to go crazy with. Yeah. Like, I feel like you're going to look at the same price as a lot of these, you know, smaller scale games. Correct. So, pretty much you're going to be spending about three to four hundred. We also didn't do Infinity. I, I, I thought about that one, and I was like, ooh, I've been out of it too long, and I got all the other ones done. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I've, I mean, I checked out before they kickstarted their last one, which is fine, but yeah. it's... It's one of those games where I don't think it's a. It would be good to tell much people people how much it takes to get in because it's a complicated enough game that you've got to really want it. And if you really want it, it don't care how much it costs. Yeah. You're going to get into it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a medium have... model count. It's a medium model count arm uh, game. It won't be too expensive. No. Good models. I mean, cool looking it'll, models. It'll come, <laughs> it'll come in under uh, War Machine or Horde Two list. Yeah. I would probably guess it'd probably be about four to five hundred maximum and i think i'm i'm going more towards the 400 mark yeah that well, seems about right and then but uh, just, you just buy battle tech but battle tech is a board game not a miniatures game it's a different beast you technically don't need to buy models you could use cardboard cutouts we did for fucking a long time uh the one thing you have to do say about infinity is it is a very terrain heavy game so that has to came into effect because you have to have a lot of terrain for infinity um, yeah, but I feel like that's the one, the one part of the hobby that's come down the most. With 3D printing? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you can go online and get 3D printed all sorts of cool stuff. Even before yeah. the NDF laser cut stuff really dropped it real quick. Yeah, what, once once you were able to do it at home or, like I said, paying someone on Etsy, it terrain started becoming a whole easier issue to deal with type of thing. Mm-hmm. So it is time for the media section. So, guys, if you have any other games that you want us to review, any RPGs you want us to review, uh, make sure you uh, let us know, and uh, we'll do it. Uh, I hope this was a little bit informative. Um, I thought it was kind of cool. I was kind of shocked by some of them, and on both ends of the spectrum, from the high and the low type thing. So, other than that, Kathy, I know you have like 17 things to review, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> 17 and 2? I don't even have 2. Oh, man. The one thing I, I watched yesterday, I talked about last week, which was just a couple more episodes of uh, Amsterdam Vice, which just gets better and better. But, I mean, it's, the, it's a cop show from the Netherlands, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh John, how many you got? Let's say two ish. Two ish? <laughs> I've got like seven, so no. Oh good. Like... You can you can make up for my lack of watching <laughs> anything this week. I didn't really watch much either. I had a fuck of a week. So. Yeah, I I didn't watch much. I actually caught up on some series and finished some series. So um let's see. I watched um, all of Vox Machina. Uh, the season ended this week. You should hold off on because it's on my list. And I think Kat is us to watch too. Correct. Think That's time. true. I've only seen the first couple of episodes. Correct. So I, I guess it, it is complete now. So we can all finish it and we can all give a final review type thing. That's what I wanted to say. It, it, mm-hmm. it probably won't be this week, but maybe. Who knows? Okay. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah. See. Well, with them being 30 minute episodes, it makes it a little bit easier to. You know, get no one idea here. How little free time I'm gonna have this week. <laughs> yeah, uh. one here, one there, type thing. Um, so 1883 finished today. Uh, 1883 is a Paramount Plus TV series uh, about a family moving out west and uh, trying to claim land and such. Um, this show is dirty. This show is dirty. 
T. It does not hold back with the emotions, doesn't hold back with the feels, doesn't hold back with the violence. Um, now, it's not gory and bloody, but it's the Wild West with more of a, yeah, you went out to claim land and you've never moved past the city and you're trying to take wagons through, you know, uncharted land. Oh, you got bit by a rattlesnake? Yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> you know, type thing. Um, it Does was it really real- got Tim McGraw and Faith Hill in it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tim McGraw is amazing in it. And Faith Hill, she has got some really good lines and she really chews the scene and some stuff. Yeah, it was. I was really surprised too when I first released oh, it. Oh, I mean, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. I mean, yeah. Obviously, Sam Elliott is the mark of good quality. Yeah. Um, it was really, really good. It does play down on a very bad note. I mean, it, it it's, it's kind of like what someone called a pain porn. Is like, oh shit, you know this is happening. Oh crap. Oh yeah, you got to get ready for it because they don't, you know. They didn't have doctors like, oh, you got bit by a snake. We'll run you down to the hospital and, you know, get the antivenom or, you know, starvation. Oh, I just go to the grocery. No, that, you know, this, none of that was going on. I mean, it was pretty realistic. I actually, uh, the guy that wrote it, Tyler Shelton, I think is where it is. Sheridan. 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 Yeah. Um, made all the cast go like to a cowboy farm and learn how to be cowboys for like three months or something. So, you know, add more realism to the show. It was really, really good. I enjoyed it. Um, uh, they did, and I don't want to say they got renewed for another season, but they said there's more episodes coming. Because <laughs> technically, they could have ended it here, and I would have been fine. Um, it would have been just perfectly fine. Would have been no big deal. But it's a brutal show. Um, you know, the way things are done. It was done really well, but it is very violent. Um Definitely like it. Uh, has some good lines <coughs> in it. Has great characters. Um, I look forward to see what they're going to do with AKA the new episodes or new season. Um, so I give it who like half a space herpes because there was a couple of things and you're just like eh. But overall, it's it's a solid Western TV show. Uh, if you definitely like westerns, go for this one. Watch it. Uh, it's good quality. The characters are great. Um, everybody's interesting to watch, uh, but it doesn't hold back on the brutality of the wild, wild west. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. I had to do a callback. <laughs> wiki wow, wiki, wiki wow. <laughs> So, but I mean, I really liked it. I think Kathy, Kathy, I think you would like it a lot because I know you're, yeah, you like your Wild West shows. I like horses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's plenty of those in this too. So, John, what do you got? Uh, well, uh, Friday uh, after fucking up my back, Bane and I watched uh, Free Guy since for some fucking reason it's free on Disney Plus and hey, HBO well, Max, by the way. The reason is, of course, is because it's a Fox movie, and as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh. Uh-huh. Which, uh, going on that, it's free on HBO Max, but also Kingsman is on HBO Max now. The King's Man? Yeah, The King's Man. Yeah, best way to say it. Yeah. I already that. saw that one, but maybe. We'll see. I don't know what kind of time we're going to have. Anyways, um, we enjoyed the crap out of it. The whole thing is basically, he's an NPC in an online game. And, I mean, I don't really want to ruin... I don't want to say it's got deep mystery or some such shit like that. It really doesn't, but it's enjoyable. Um, it's he's an NPC in, in a in an online game, but he meets somebody and starts to become aware, and you know, well, not really aware and such, but starts to evolve and you know do things outside of what he's supposed to. And it's Ryan Reynolds as the uh, the main character guy, and then there's a bunch of other people in it. Taika Waititi's in it as a owner of a software gaming company, and he's really funny if a bit. I'm a pastiche, but pretty funny. And then uh, one of the guys in it is the older boy from uh, Stranger Things. I think it's named Steve. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, the one, the rich kid one who ended up being a cool dude after you thought he was going to be a total douche through the first season. And you're like, oh, well, he's actually pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, I, enjoy, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed the cast in general. They did a great job. 
uh, our flag means death. Speaking of Taika Waititi. Oh, yes. I totally forgot about that. Um, but I enjoyed the crap out of it. It's funny, reasonably heartfelt, uh, some fun action, some good cameos here or there. Uh, I mean, how are we talking about Channing Tatum as putting out good cameos and just he just does what he wants and he gives it every time. It's great. It's good to see an actor who's turned around his career, so to speak, because he was a fucking joke for a while there. But now, you know, he's done good stuff and his acting skills going up. I'm yeah, pleased. Uh, I enjoyed the crap out of it. I'm going to say anything more than two space rupees would be generous. Because um, it is still kind of see-through. I saw the plot really quick, but <laughs> I did enjoy watching it all the way through. And it's one I wouldn't necessarily rewatch next week. But, you know, I guess you're watching it in like six months, a year. Like, oh, let me watch that again. See if I catch anything new. I do suggest it because it's on, probably on something you guys got for free. Yeah, it's HBO Max and Disney Plus, so you got it. Most Hopefully. I mean, no, Kathy's got it. She can watch it if she gets the chance, but she's uh-huh. had a busy time, too. Kanto? Um, I did start a new show, and I don't even know if I'm going to finish it, because it is... <laughs> wow, that t- that's that's a hell of a statement. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious enough that I want to, but I don't know if I want to because it's kind of, okay. So it's a, it's, it's on Apple TV. So it's going to turn off a lot of people auto- automatically, um, type thing, but it's a show called severance. Severance is a show where people go to work for a company that kind of looks like Apple, um, where they sign a waiver stating that as soon as they walk through this door, this microchip in their brain turns off everything that's outside the world so they can concentrate just on work. And so when they leave work, they don't think about work at all. And when they're in work, they don't think about their life at all. And so it's about planting a microchip in people's brains. And it is, it's got Christopher Walken, John Turturro in it. Um, Adam Scott, Patricia Arquette. It is. I, I tuned out. He said Christopher Walken. <laughs> it is kind of trippy. I'm only like an episode and a half in, and I was like, I don't know if I. Yeah, it's that morbid curiosity thing that's going on with this show. Um, but I'm probably gonna watch some more. But I'm just like, I see this going bad really quickly, and not bad as in bad acting or bad story. Just these people are gonna get fucked, <laughs> you know, type thing. That this is going to turn to like everybody gets murdered or something. I don't know. But it, it's an interesting concept um, type thing. So it, it, it's, it's kind of weird because as you're watching it, you're like, oh, this kind of what this must be what it feels like to work at like Apple or something. Or, you know, because it's all everything's all clean and white and pristine. And, you know, it's all like it's just so creepy. That sounds so creepy. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's so creepy. But I'm going to try to keep watching it. Uh, type thing. Um, only like an episode or like two episodes in or something. So I'm going to check that out and see how that is. Cool. Um, the one thing that I did, and Kathy, it is on uh, Netflix. There's a new Vikings Valhalla TV show on there. Huh. Um, it's actually supposed to be taken like, I guess there was original Vikings Warrior TV show. This is like 100 years after that TV show. So, I, I've got it on my list. I didn't know if you would saw it or not, so I figured I'd give you a thing. It just came out, like, this week. So, I don't know how you like your Vikings. I like them comedic, like Norsemen. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll have to see what it is, but it's supposedly it's supposed to be pretty good. It's, it's gotten some decent reviews. So, Kathy, you got anything? I have nothing. Nothing at all. I have, I have zilch. John? Uh, well, my second one is a little short thing. It's uh, the second episode of Hired Steel, which is sort of like a Battletech fan movie uh, thing that came out on cool. Machinima. Uh, I would just just look it up on YouTube, Hired Steel. Uh, it has very good quality graphics, solid voice acting from mostly people in the Battletech community. You've got... Uh, uh, sh- uh, Phil from No Guts, No Galaxy in there. You've got text from the back plants. Legion who does all the 
Battletech videos. You've got Aggie Law Girl. You've got Baradul, who's another big MWO guy. The first episode had Star Wolf, who's another big MWO streamer. And it's very cool that you just get those guys together doing stuff and put out some really good quality episodes. Only a couple minutes long, but I am enjoying the crap out of them. And it's good to see that kind of stuff being uh, made. That's how you get your uh, your property that you love out there into the mainstream. Uh, I'm going to give it zero, zero space herpes because <laughs> the quality is really good. I mean, especially if you count the fact that it's fan-made. Like, if, you know, any of the companies involved in Battletech Catalyst Games or PGI or technically Microsoft owns the Battle the MechWarrior license, if they had put that out, you'd be like, fuck yeah, that's great. But these are independent people doing it and it's also really cool to have them getting the guys and ladies in the hobbies to jump in and do voices it's 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 really cool i love the crap out of it uh just so everybody knows uh next week picard starts back um march 3rd so another one to add into that whole list. <laughs> I can see John's like, damn it. <laughs> well, I mean, I can do weekly series because Bane and I will just make time one day a week to watch it. Correct. It's a whole lot easier it's than binging it. It's catching up on stuff is hard or these like respect to certain series, but fucking 20 episode series is need to go the way of the fucking dado. <laughs> there ain't no reason to have a 20 episode season anymore. Uh-uh. Just don't. I'm looking at you, Star Trek Discovery. I'm looking at you. <laughs> They got time for all that shit. Well, yeah, I guess uh, so. Picard comes back uh, next week, so I'm looking forward to that because uh, last season was really good. Folks will we'll get Picard into Obi Wan into Halo, maybe two of those overlapping. Uh, uh, let's see. I got to pull it up right here because I know Halo is like March 25th. Moon Knight is March 30th. Halo is March 24th. Moon Knight is March 30th. And then you got the new Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which is May 5th. Kenobi is May 5th. Okay. May 25th, excuse me. Wow. So you'll have Picard and Halo with some crossover, and then Halo and Moon Knight with a lot of crossover. Yeah. Not May 4th. <laughs> well, so, Bane, they all have specific days they release stuff on. They have basically chosen not to directly compete with each other, which is smart. So they have whatever day it is closest to May 4th. If May 4th is another streaming services day, May 4th is a Wednesday, which is Disney's day. So uh, why is it not May 4th then? <laughs> that actually seems like, seems really dumb because with Disney releases stuff on Wednesdays, why the fuck would you do it on May 4th? It's supposed to be research now. Disney, why are you stupid? <laughs> Um, so I watched a movie on Netflix and I didn't know when I saw it that it was actually a sequel to a TV show that was on Netflix. Uh, cause I was like, Ooh, this looks like a cool, you know, martial arts show. So I don't oh, remember how I much. Know, I know which one you watched. Yeah. So Woo Assassin, this is the sequel to Woo Assassins. Um, and I didn't know that until I like kind of looked at the blurb like, Oh, cool. Martial art movie, you know, save it type thing if i get around to it i get around to it but it's actually the sequel to woo assassin um so it's called fistful of vengeance and it's pretty much just a solid martial arts movie um story-wise eh, okay um but you're looking for the cool martial arts and acting you know the the sequencing of the fights and stuff like that there really isn't much to go off of this it it, it gets like two space herpes because it's just turn your brain off and just, you know, watch people kick the crap out of each other. Was it bad? No. Could I live without it? Yeah. Was it? I know my cousin John enjoyed it, but he really liked Woo Assassins as well. Yeah. Woo Assassins was pretty decent. Um, I just was really surprised that they went with a movie instead of a TV series to finish out the story, but I understand because mm-hmm. of COVID. Might not have had the money. Yeah, yeah. and the money like, and all that stuff too. And I'll be but, honest, I have a lot of respect for any service streaming or otherwise allows the property to make an ending two hour movie to end their series. Correct. Like too many series just get fucking canned and you ever see them again. Uh, one of the ones I liked from a long time ago, it doesn't really hold up compared to what they put out nowadays, but for the time it was good. Uh, Birds of prey 
um, actually got a two hour movie to end it, which I thought was way, way nice of the, of the uh, fucking uh, channel. Like usually you don't get that. You know, it's good to get some wrap up to all the things going on. You, more often than not, you just get the fucking uh, firefly thing. Where it's like, no, nope, kick that shit to the curb. Let's go on. <laughs> there it is. Gone and done. Um, I'm still watching Raised by Wolves. And is this show great? No. Is this show intriguing? Yes. Is this show strange as shit? Fuck yeah, it is. Um, so it's on HBO Max. This is season two. This show just goes way out on everything you're just like what all right yeah it's sci-fi yeah okay we'll do it still still intrigued still liking it it's just you're just kind of like someone walked by and goes what the fuck are you watching and i'm like raised by wolves goes, oh. God, i know right <laughs> and yeah i was like yeah this is Bayman pretty weird to me all the time what the fuck are you watching <laughs> yeah there's like this is weird as shit i'm like yeah it is but it's interesting enough, so I'm still watching that. Um, did anybody else have anything? I mean, I just cute that you think I had a lot of free time this week. No, I'm just I making not... sure because I was going to go no. on with my next one. Um, so I have. Don't been... worry, we'll interrupt you if we need to. I, I usually <laughs> do anyway. Um, yep, we do. <laughs> I have been playing the crap out of Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West is the sequel to, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, which was a great game. Uh, at the time, it had some really cool stuff. This game, holy fuck balls! This has got to be my top, one of my top five games of all time. This game, not only it really, really is pushing the PS5, and the graphics are insane. The photo mode, and you you can actually, you know, go down, and the skin has dimples, and she has like peach fuzz facial hair and everything, and the graphics. Oh my God. I so heard about that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was the whole. Oh she's got God. a beard. I'm like, y'all need to see what a werewolf woman looks like. I mean, this the graphics on this. I've taken some screenshots and stuff, and I'll probably put them up later. But I mean, there are so many times I'm playing the game, and I'm like, oh, I'm running away from these, you know, mecha dinosaurs and everything. I'm like, whoa, that looks cool. Pause photo mode. You know, get you know this real cool shot of you know me running for my life or whatever, or just this cool sunset or walking through a field of flowers. This game uh, is gorgeous. I can't wait for them to port it over to PC to see what a PC can do with it. Um, because if the PS5 does this, a damn good you know, PC machine is going to just blow everybody's mind. Um, I am about 40 hours into the game. And I'm only about, I would say, 40% done. The game is huge beyond belief. Uh, there is so much to do, so much things happening. The story is incredible. Usually, but sometimes I'm like kind of skipping through the cutscenes a little bit because I'm like, because you can do like a fast forward just so you can read it quicker. I'm like, no, I'm watching it. I'm watching it like a movie. Uh, it is really good. Uh, gameplay. Gameplay of this game is solid. There's only a few minor issues I have with this game, and that's when I'm trying to jump onto something or jump to something because there's like sometimes there's little jumping puzzles and I get the buttons wrong or I use the stick and push it in the wrong direction and I leap off into the void and almost die uh, type Boy, thing. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much I love jumping puzzles. Yeah. It's my fucking most favorite thing ever in a video game. The good thing about this one is um, they did a lot of good tweaks to the system that you don't have to like predict if you can grab onto that. You can use buttons and it'll show you where you can grab onto things. It's just angling it so it makes it a whole lot easier. Sometimes I'm like not paying attention. That's a good feature. Yes. Uh, and it, you can turn it on permanently or you can like hit a button to make this pulse and it'll show where you can grab on uh, type thing. But this game is, it's, it's, it, it is one of my top five video games of all time. Um, I, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go back to play it because I'm the story it reminds me when I was first learning about the Halo story and playing that and going, oh, really? Oh, cool. Yeah, you know, learning all the background and the history and all this other stuff. Uh, so Horizon is a story about humanity, of course, is destroying the planet. The planet's going to get destroyed. And a group of people left the planet 
but a lot of people that couldn't that couldn't get on the ship and go stayed on the planet, but it got destroyed and it's like a thousand years in the future. And there's mechanized dinosaurs that pretty much ruin I mean, the planet. There's more to the story than that, and I even played the game. Correct. I'm just giving the basics of it type thing without blowing it completely out of the water. And so, you know, you don't have you personally don't get, you know, these awesome ray guns and stuff like that. So your stuff is like low tech, like bows and arrows and stuff like that to, to kill things. It's super high tech when you get the computer interface thing in the first game. Correct. When you, when you, (laughs) when you get that, you get some cool abilities, but for overall, uh, it is open world. So you can run and do whatever and go wherever you want. Don't have to follow the plot. Um, this one you do, you do get certain things in the story, you know, certain abilities. So you have to, you know, follow that so you can open up things in the game. But for the most part, I've spent more time not going through the story than doing the story. The main, the main, the main quest line, uh, running around getting villages. One of my things I love to do with open world is seeing if I can make it from point A to point B without dying a lot and getting to places where I'm not supposed to get at that level type thing and climbing yeah. around. It's kind of, it's kind of like one of my challenges of open world is like, Oh, that's on the other side of the map. That's a level of like 60 zone and I'm level 10. Fuck it. Let's Leroy Jenkins that shit and see where I can go and get done. Um, I love to explore in this game. I mean, this game is, it, I love to explore in every game as long as it's got some, whether it be stylized or whatever, as long as it's got unique or very pretty graphics or just mm-hmm. cool designs. Yeah. I mean, this, I've been, there are many times that I'm just like running and I'm like, oh, stop, screenshot, this looks cool. Ooh, ooh stop, pan around with the, the photo mode just so I can see all the cool stuff and all the graphics and all the patterns and the lights and everything that's going on with it. I, I love this game. This game is amazing. Um, the story you know, is very, very good. Tell us how you really feel. If I could marry it, I would. <laughs> You're already married. <laughs> but I really, really like this game. I can't wait to find out the story. Um, this game really pushes the PS5 beyond belief. Um, there's actually been uh, one time that I left it paused too long and like overnight and didn't even think about it, come back, and the graphic card was going, oh, you need to restart me. <laughs> Because it had an yeah. issue, and I was like, "Okay, tight." But I mean, if you have a PS4, PS5, and you aren't playing this game, uh, PS5, I don't think PS4 can do much with it. Honestly, if it's that bad on your PS5, it's going to be oh great. Ooh, get it! Uh, Sick of John. Hold on, fucking. But fuck off, robot. The, the thing that I really like, that someone did do a comparison between the PS4 and PS5 graphics, and it is night and day. It, it is so hugely night and day on there that it's just crazy. But I really like, I really like this game a lot. I will, I think this is one of my first games that I'm not going to be like trading away as soon as I'm done with it. Because one, there's so much to do with it. And I'm having a blast just hunting down dinosaurs. Because now I got the ability to turn a dinosaur into like my pet and send it after other dinosaurs. Nothing like watching two giant thunder jaws go after each other and beat each other up. So, other than that, anybody got anything else? No, it was just you. Okay. Um. So, John, are you going to be streaming next week, by the way? No, no streams at all until next Sunday for me. Now, I might get home in time and might fire it up and do that, but next Sunday is the next time I am definitely streaming. Okay. Uh, I'll probably be doing some more streaming because I definitely have to get this painting done. I've got to get painted up for Adepticon. Woo woo. Can't wait to see people. Can't wait to hang out. Mm -hmm. Um, Give hugs. So, uh, other than that, um, so I may I may take over some of your spots if you're not going to do something. Just let me know beforehand. Um, no, just just, just go and just take do over. it. And if you're on, I I just will play after I am by myself, and <laughs> it'll be okay. Okay, type thing. Kathy, what do you got going on this week on your channel? I will be painting something. <laughs> painting something, I finished, and then I finished my I finished my Space Marine for. The Meat Grinder unofficial event at Adepticon. Uh-huh. 
uh, then... Meat Grinder Gareth. Uh... Yeah. Friday War of the Worlds? Friday War of the Worlds. I'll probably be painting this more on this goblin bust, but I might dig out some uh, some uh, Games Workshop models. Ooh. Maybe I'll finish basing those Geller Pox. And if you're wondering, I believe she's on Chapter 9 of War of the Worlds Friday. I am on Chapter 9 of War of the Worlds on Friday. Yeah, I read the first eight chapters uh, a couple days ago, Friday. And so we'll be continuing that. And I don't know if I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. I, I don't know how long it is. <laughs> uh, I wanted it's on to my answer. Kindle, so I couldn't just flip ahead. I wanted to answer Bany on and better than Elden Ring. Yes, better than Elden Ring. I don't know. Some of my friends might disagree, but they took a whole week off to play. <laughs> one, of, one of them on Friday made his wife take a day off work to take their kids to the dentist because he couldn't just take the kids to the dentist. <laughs> yeah. Despite uh, the fact he was already off because he had to play Elden Ring. Yeah. He yeah. had to. Yes. Had to. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I played good. Elden Ring in the beta uh, on the PS5. I got into the beta and played it on the PS5. And I was like, okay, it's a Souls game. It looks pretty. It's a Souls game. Oh, same, same, same way to play a Souls game. Same way to play a Souls game. Dying, dying a lot. Same. Dying some uh, more. Yeah. I don't have the mental fortitude to play those games right now. No. That's the reason why. I, I, you know, I can't. Open world games playing where there's just a bunch of randos running around doesn't appeal to me. But somebody did tell me that you can play solo games of it, and that that's fun. I don't know. Hey, if they're enjoying it, it's all fine. I'm Correct. not going to yuck on someone else's job, but it's definitely uh, best game in the world. Is definitely going to be a subjective as hell topic. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't know. It's Diablo of... too. <laughs> don't hate myself enough for Dark Souls. Yeah, that's also another thing. If they could make it a Dark Souls and you could like lower the setting to easy, <laughs> so you you weren't getting one hit by everything out there. I think more people would enjoy it, but that's just my opinion. It's a different kind of game. It's a yeah. I want a challenge game. I don't want a challenge. I want catharsis. I life is a challenge. I want Fuck catharsis. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. Well, guys, we appreciate everybody coming out and listening. We appreciate you taking your time out of your day to hang out with us. Um, don't forget, John will not be streaming next week. I'll probably jump in and do some painting streams because I got to get some stuff done. Don't forget to check out Kathy. Uh, on her channel, and so you can go and watch her paint and read. Um, oh. other and than that, uh, the first the epi- first episode and zero episode of my new game will be dropping <coughs> this week. Oh, yes. Correct. Yeah, so we'll be putting those up. Uh, probably go live tomorrow with them. Should be able to go live with them tomorrow. So, guys, please take care of yourself. Watch after each other. You see someone that needs help, help if you can. Um for more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Kathy. We're going to send y'all off to Vlieger Dragon, so don't go anywhere. I mean, go to Vlieger Dragon, but don't go anywhere besides that. Vlieger Dragon. Oh, yeah. Russian warship? Go fuck yourself. <laughs>